Hello, we are from Team NRL Seven Seven, selected for the final round of Miranda 2015, organized by National Students. Our project idea for this competition is Bipex, Bipex Exoskeleton. Over the past few decades, the civil population in our country has increased, and hence, now, healthcare is of prime importance to me. Bipex is an exoskeleton system designed for people who have lost partial or complete control over their limbs, and hence, helping them to lead a normal life once again. It's, a, it's an affordable and an effective solution for such people rather than just a passive and supporting thing. So as you can see, this is the block diagram of our bi project biped exoskeleton. Pistons are the major components of our project. We uh, The actuation in our project is happening through pistons. The air that the piston requires is provided through the compressor. The compressor provides air to the pistons which gets also stored on an onboard storage uh, mounted on the exoskeleton. The switching of airflow inside the pistons is done using solenoids and the solenoids are controlled by the Myrio using some special components called relays. Then the Myrio acquires data from different kinds of sensors such as pulse sensor, pressure sensor, ultrasonic sensor, accelerometer and the EMG sensor. We also take a live streaming of the motion using a camera and we've also included internet of things. So the pulse sensor gives the live pulse of the patient the pressure sensor gives the reading of the pressure that is inside of the of the pressure of the pressure sensor gives the air pressure that is inside the that is stored inside the onboard storage the camera gives a live streaming of the person uh, who is using the biped exoskeleton the ultrasonic sensor is used for stopping the biped exoskeleton on detection of some obstacle the accelerometer gives acceleration in all the three about all the three axles. So if there is some mechanical error that can be deduced using the accelerometer. The EMG sensors are sensors that are put on the leg of the patient. Uh, the EMG sensors, the full form of EMG is electromyography. E EMG sensors will give the plot of the muscle movement of the patient. Now we see the design and the working of the biped exoskeleton or the bipeds. The major components used here are the external framework, the pistons and the solenoids. So the external framework is made out of wood as well as aluminium to make it robust as well as lightweight provided with appropriate amount of cushioning on the inner side. The actuators used here are pneumatic pistons. Okay. The principal used is pneumatics. So what happens here is the pistons are fixed in such a way that the linear motion of the piston as the air flows into it is converted into the rotary motion at the joints, in this case the knee joint and the hip joint. The fluid used here is compressed air since we are using pneumatics. So the compressed air is supplied from an external compressor and it is stored on board in bottles at a pressure of around 5 to 6 bars. This air is supplied to the pistons which makes it move and which controls the motion of the biped. So here uh, you can see here the pistons have two flow regulator valves over here. With this we can control the rate of airflow inside and out of the pistons. Okay. Now the flow of air inside the piston is controlled with the help of solenoids as you can see here. Okay. So the solenoids here do the function of switching the direction of air which flows into or out of the piston. Okay. The solenoid has an inlet, inlet valve over here. Okay. Now the solenoid as we know uh, has a coil, copper coil inside it. So what happens is when current flows, a magnetic field is produced and due to it, the switch inside the solenoid moves to one side. Okay. So here what happens is, uh, at potential about 12 volts, the solenoid switches to one side and uh, except for that, to the other side. So that controls the flow of air into the piston, okay, which is then converted into motion of the biped. Okay. And the solenoids are controlled with the help of a code which we uploaded on the Myrio circuit board. So now I'm going to explain to you the basic algorithm of our biped exoskeleton. Uh, first of all, I'm going to tell you that uh, biped, uh, the Myrio that we are using is a combination of an FPGA and a microprocessor. Uh, so uh, th this this helped us for uh, the major part of our uh, algorithm, which was parallel processing. Uh, the parallel processing is possible due to uh, Myrio. If uh, the normal microprocessors execute the co code line by line. 
But uh, a major advantage of Myrio was that uh, Myrio executes every code in one clock pulse. So the, the, this advantage of parallel processing we have used uh, in our algorithm. <coughs> Let us consider. So right now I'm going to tell you the exact algorithm of our uh, bipedal system. Consider these to be the legs of the patient. <coughs> the first motion, uh, consider this to be the left leg and this to be the right leg. So the first motion will be that the right knee will come behind and the right thigh will go ahead. This will happen parallelly again due to parallel processing. This, this was a major advantage. We could do this, perform these two motions parallelly. Then the leg of the patient will look something like this. Uh, the next motion will be that this right thigh will continue to move forward and the right knee will also move forward. So the next position of the patient will be something like this. <coughs> now the right thigh starts to move backward and the left knee starts to move backward. So the position of the patient will be something like this. And now <coughs> the right thigh starts moving ahead and the right knee also starts moving ahead parallelly again due to parallel processing. And at the same time the right knee starts moving behind. So the leg of the patient looks something like this. And now this complete process is repeated from this step. So as you can see, the process, the process of walking happens due to this, this algorithm. So this is this is the basic algorithm that we have used for uh, making our biped exoskeleton walk. Okay, so now I'm going to explain you the main VI of our project. Okay, so this is our front panel of our main VI. Uh, this part here is the walking control. The, there are two buttons in the walking control. This is, there is one start walk and one stop walk. As we press the start walk, the biped exoskeleton starts walking. Then there comes the stop walk. When the biped exoskeleton is uh, walking and we want to make it stop, then uh, we press the stop walk button. Uh, this is one crucial button that we have made here called initialize pistons. Uh, this is required as uh, when we stop the biped exoskeleton, the pistons stop at the position uh, where they last were. So we need to initialize the pistons in and the initial position. So we use those buttons. Then we have made four LEDs here. These LEDs act as indicators. This, this LED is for the left knee, this LED is for the left thigh, this LED is for the right thigh and this LED is for the right knee. So as the pistons of the corresponding leg joints move, these LEDs glow. Next we are moving on to the camera part. The camera part is installed, is mounted on the back part of the exoskeleton. The camera part shows the leg, all, all the four joints of the leg. There are two buttons created for the camera. There is one start button, start camera and one stop camera. So when we run the VI and press the start camera, the webcam which is attached at the back of the exoskeleton starts shooting. Then we are moving to the EMG. EMG is the, is the short form for electromyography sensors. Uh, the EMG sensor is attached to the leg of the patient who is using the biped exoskeleton. So as we start the EMG, the EMG graph is plotted in this waveform chart. And uh, we can stop the EMG using this button. Uh, next. This is the pulse, this, this waveform here is uh, for the pulse, uh, the pulse uh, module is attached to the finger of the patient. Uh, this LED here glows according to the diastolic motion of the blood. So uh, there are two more parts of the blood motion, first is diastolic and second is systolic. So uh, uh, during the diastolic part, this LED glows. This, this, uh, and uh, there are two buttons created here, uh, one start pulse and another one is stop pulse. So as we press the start pulse button, uh, the waveform chart displays the diastolic peaks. So we can get the pulse using this module. Next we are moving on to the accelerometer part. Uh, again there are two buttons created for the accelerometer. The uh, first button is start accelerometer and second button is stop accelerometer. In the accelerometer, the, the accelerometer that we are using for this particular VI, for this particular waveform chart is the one which is pre-installed inside the Myrio. 
so as we start the axle and the myrio is kept inside the bag which is uh, on the biped exoskeleton so as the uh, as the patient who is using the biped exoskeleton moves uh, it, the accelerometer can sense an acceleration on 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 the x y and z axis and uh, the accelerations are plotted so uh, using this we can get the acceleration up along each axis uh, as we press the start accelerometer button the uh, waveform chart starts plotting the accelerometer graph and if we want to stop plotting the accelerometer graph we just have to press the stop accelerometer button finally this is the pressure uh, waveform chart uh, as you know uh, we have used air pressure in our biped exoskeleton for moving a biped exoskeleton so we need to keep a track of the air pressure which is there inside the biped exoskeleton this particular vi does the thing so as uh, this this particular vi we have the sensor installed on our uh, biped uh, is a special sensor which gives uh, voltage difference according to the pressure increased uh, so as the pressure increases the voltage difference that the uh, sensor gives increases linearly so as we start the vi we get a voltage we get a voltage plot here according to the pressure increase so right now i'm going to explain to you everything of our biped exoskeleton so this is a bag that we have attached at the biped uh, exoskeleton everything along with the myrio and the pressure sensor and the emg sensor and the emg sensor module is kept inside this bag connections from this bag are taken using wires uh the onboard storage as we had told uh we are using uh, bottles for our onboard storage is kept inside the bag itself this is the pulse module okay uh, these are the data wires that go directly inside the myrio these are the data wires they go directly inside the myrio uh the pulse module is directly attached to the finger of the patient like this yeah th this gets attached here and uh, the data is sent to the myrio for uh, uh, plotting in the lab view so as you can see we have uh, attached uh, amg probes here uh, wait i'll remove one probe and show you this is one amg probe that uh, that we had attached to the patient's leg there are three more this goes here inside the exoskeleton like this so as you can see here this is the camera module that we had atta attached to the uh, back of the biped exoskeleton this camera this is a webcam the usb webcam which directly goes to the myrio uh, <clears throat> the usb webcam points to the legs of the patient uh, so a clear uh, video of the legs of the patient can be taken and uh, shown to the physiotherapist so if anything ever goes wrong uh, we can directly view the legs and the joints all the four joints of the patient the, and uh, uh, this this will help us to uh, figure out what the problem exactly was motors are very expensive pistons are very cheap in cost which makes the exoskeleton cost a little cheaper they provided it was provided a lot of force and we converted linear actuation to rotatory motion okay, the future of a biped exoskeleton what i'm um, right now i'll tell you what are components that we are going to add uh, in our biped biped exoskeleton in the future uh, the first thing will be an onboard compressor this compressor will be a small dc compressor which will be atta attached to the back of the biped exoskeleton uh, this will help the biped exoskeleton to become portable <clears throat> the second thing will be automating the pressure uh, right now we have to set pressure at 5 bars uh, manually uh, and to make our algorithm work uh, what we are planning to do is uh, setting a certain range uh, using a pressure sensor uh, like 4 bar and 5 bar so if the pressure goes below 4 bar the compressor should automatically start and if the pressure goes above 5 bar the uh, compressor will automatically stop so this will help us in maintaining the pressure between a certain range uh, the third thing that we are going to implement is uh, internet of things uh, this is something that will help the physiotherapist uh, who is not physically present here uh, he will be able to uh, access all the data the the vi the complete vi sitting inside his clinic Uh, he he will be able to access everything. He will be able to watch the video of the person uh, sitting inside his clinic. The uh, the fourth the fourth and the most important thing is uh, 
making the algorithm better. We have enjoyed our journey in Niantar 2015. Thanks a lot for that. We have also written a blog on our entire journey and the link is bipex.pk and the link is given below.